The Ink and Paint Club podcast is intended for mature audiences only. So don't tell your parents! Listener discretion is advised. I have many questions, yet none of them I want to ask because I don't want that knowledge in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> don't ask questions we're not prepared to handle the answers to. I'm not going to ask questions then. <laughs> It's not that I'm not prepared to handle them. It's just like, don't, I don't want the answers. Because <laughs> then that's knowledge I have to have. But knowledge is power, JD. Mm, I'm okay with this not having this knowledge. You'd rather be powerless. <laughs> In this situation, yes. You're listening to the Ink and Pain Club podcast. Your weekly home for animation reviews and discussions. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Ink and Paint Club podcast. My name is JD, and joining me are two lovely people. Let's first welcome to the show, Kyle. Yo. Well done. And Matt is also here. I am also here. Hello, JD. Hello, Kyle. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Before we get into uh, our episode here, I just want to remind everybody that you can follow our show on our Facebook and our Twitter. Uh, We also have a Discord if you would like to interact with us. And you can now find our show on pretty much any streaming service, uh, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, pretty much anywhere you get your podcasts. You can find this show as well as our... uh, you know, any other show we put out. I uh, just want to let everybody know that in case it, I didn't make it clear before. Uh, so this week we are talking about uh, what can, can be considered as the successor to regular show. Uh, JG Quintel's uh, show Close Enough ha- was saved from development hell um, and thrust upon HBO Max. Um it was supposed to be on TBS, uh, like I think like two years ago. And then Louis C.K. had to fucking Louis C.K. it up. He Louis C.K. happened, and uh, that they basically fucking canned the whole uh, animation block that they were planning around his well, show called uh, the the cops. Their, I think. Yeah, well, that was their fault for banking their entire animation block on one thing. Well, um, uh, I, uh, there were some other shows planned for that block. I, I was only able to determine that uh, Final Space was on there as well, so they made it out okay. Yeah, um, but I guess there were some other shows aside from those two, the cop and the cops. But um, I guess they uh, didn't make it clearly. But yeah, they originally announced uh, close enough back in May of 2017, and uh, in July of uh, 2020, we're finally we finally got it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that was uh, I didn't realize like until I, I was doing the research for the episode. But yeah, that was like four uh, May two th- May two thousand seventeen. That was four months after regular show ended. So yeah, we were wait- basically waiting since the entirety of like regular show uh, leaving to, for this. And I, I hope that trailer. what Kyle? They said that trailer wasn't even clips from the show though. Yeah, I think they just they cut that together as sort of like examples of shit that they could. Well, they they ended up reusing one of those clips for one of the episodes here. From what I read, they said they used that to pitch. Yeah, I could see that. Just like a proof of concept kind of thing. Um, but yeah, um, we honestly, finally got the announcement that uh, in October they finally announced that it was going to be hitting HBO Max because from basically that time when it got announced for the first time and then until October, like when it was just, yeah, the, like you said, it was in like, it was in uh, uh, development hell. Oh, we didn't know what that, what was going on with it, if it was ever going to air. And then uh, just finally said, hey, it's, it's going on HBO Max. And then we, even then we didn't even know if it was going to be like weekly or dropped off. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Dropped all at once. It turned out it was dropped all at once. Which I'm good with. Um, yeah. I, I've i grown accustomed to just having an entire season ready to go. Um, I mean, it kind of sucks. I, we've, I, think, I feel like we've talked about this several times on the show before, but like, it, it, I mean, it. there's something to be said for having something week to week that you have something to look forward to, but there's also something to be said where, you know, I marathon through all all 
all eight episodes of this with over the course of like three hours. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it just depends on what you're accustomed to. Like right, it, it, there is yeah, there, there's there's pros and cons to both models because you know doing the weekly thing you know gives you more time to kind of discuss like it well maybe not for like this type of show but for like a more um story driven show like being able to <laughs> sort of digest the episode and being able to like you know process it until like the next episode and like you get all the fan content and all the theories and stuff that come out for that sort of thing and that works for other types of shows but for, for something like this like a comedy show it, it's cool to have it just all at once that way you can yeah. you know get it just get not get it out of your system but more just like you know oh, okay you get like all that's available to you all at once and that's nice but the thing was we didn't know what model hbo max was going to go for just because some streaming services now like you know even when the new ones that crop up um like i was just using it as an example there's that um there's that new uh animated star trek show that's going to be coming out soon and i'm pretty sure cbs does weekly uh uploads so that's mm-hmm. one that's probably going to be uploaded weekly but then, like, we just got, as an example, close enough on HBO Max, has just dropped all at once. So it's safe right. to assume that in the future, for exclusive stuff for HBO Max, they're probably just going to drop everything at once. Yeah, because uh, they did that for Looney Tunes. Um, no, I, I don't know what else HBO Max has. I don't, I don't, I'm not really sure. But, um, yeah. Um, so, I'll be honest. I kind of dropped off of regular show after a while. Um I think yeah it was funny on the uh, adventure time episode we uh, me Kyle and Aiden had the kind of discussion like uh, we all dropped off of a uh, uh, adventure time like after a certain mm-hmm. point and I think it was around that point adventure for adventure time that I kind of dropped off of regular show right around that same time and I think it was for actually the same exact reasons it like both shows were kind of like doing these like weird romance arcs I wasn't really like mm. too big on and I was just sort of like, eh, you know, maybe I'll just let it all air and then come back around and, you know, watch it all at once. But uh, I still I haven't gotten around to it, actually. I, yeah. I, I do need to go back and uh, finish a regular show, too. I haven't even seen, like, the movie. And then I haven't seen, like, most of the later half of the series. Yeah, I don't... I, I think I stopped watching sometime before the movie. I did watch the movie and then a lot watched the last episode. Um, so I have, like, there's a lot... I know there was, like, an entire season where they went to space or something. Um, which is what Captain Underpants is doing right now. <laughs> um, oh right, yeah. That yeah. was what we were, that was our uh, that was our backup plan in case uh, all close enough didn't drop at once. Which I I didn't watch all of Captain Underpants yet, but I'll get to it eventually. <laughs> uh, but we are talking about uh, basically, like I said, the successor to regular shows is like regular shows natural evolution, kind of. Um, it feels I'll, like it feels like this is the show that jg quintel always wanted to make just it, when you yes when you kind of have it in the back of your mind you're like uh from what i understand a regular show i mean like if you even look back at the um the little short films he did that inspired a regular show like uh what was it uh, two in the a.m p.m three in the mm-hmm. a.m p.m yeah. uh and just like how much more adult the humor in that and then i mean fucking uh, mordecai and uh, benson are characters and that and then you see them like doing drugs and cursing and then it's like oh yeah like JG Quintel not only looks like a stoner, but like needs to be making stoner comedy kind of stuff, which yeah. honestly a lot of what close enough is, is stoner comedy. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like a lot of it, I feel like it doesn't lean as heavily into like, like specifically stoner humor as it could have. Like yeah. if, this, if this were made for specifically for like adult swim, like I could see it like veering in that kind of direction, uh-huh. but more, this more just kind of like has, uh, I will say it has the trappings of an adult show that in this area where like, you know, if it's, uh, if it's on late, if it's like, you know, it's an adult swim show or if it's like on Fox late night or whatever, like, you know, it's a show it's for adults. It's got a very like, and, uh, this kind of goes to regular shows art style too like it's not i i I wouldn't say it's i would say like it's simplistic in some respects but it can be detailed when it wants to be like Mm -hmm. it just it depends on uh segments Uh, certain certain segments like there's some segments in the original regular show and there's some segments in in close enough where there's actual like bits of like some really cool animation yeah. Um, but as far as like the the actual humor uh, that they give off, like yeah, that this one is definitely like you've got you know if if it's made for adults, you got to have fucking like 
weed jokes you gotta have violence you gotta have um, jokes about doing taxes <laughs> a dick and fart jokes like it's just yeah. sort of sort of the stuff that you have to expect like if for that type of show but i feel like i don't know with the, with the humor that like regular show gives off or like jg quintel's like you know a general style I feel mm-hmm. like it works a lot better here than it does in some other uh, shows that do the same exact type of thing. Yeah, because I felt like it kind of in regular show, it almost feels like he was limiting himself on oh, like, what he could, what he really wanted to do. And I feel like he's kind of allowed. I, I want to say let loose, but you can still tell that like, OK, this is gonna, this like was supposed to be on TBS, not on Adult Swim. So it's not like he can go like like Aqua Teen Hunger Force level of absurd. Uh, and crude um, yeah and, and part of me is wondering now that because this is on hbo max like if uh I, i'm not sure if this is if they've mentioned a season two or greenlit a season two or anything i, I could hope, not I, find I, any info on it i, I would hope i would hope so because you know this turned out really great um but if they did i imagine they might be able to push their sort of um uh their censorship like a, a, a bit more Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm still not exactly sure if being on HBO Max affords them the same sort of freedom as like being on a Netflix or something. With I mean, this you know, it's streaming, so I know that there's like ratings and stuff. But I feel like you know they, they get away with a lot more on like streaming. Right. Um, I'm not sure in the, if like in regards to animation uh, specifically, but as far as like in general, like for uh, original productions for streaming platforms that I've seen anyway. Mm-hmm. Well, we've been talking a while, Kyle. What did you think of this? Well. I stopped watching regular show way back then, mainly because I got tired of it. It's basically on a formula. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Cartoons on a formula, like say Phineas and Ferb, it's like, all right, it's cute at first, but if I know exactly what's going to happen in the fucking cartoon, it gets less interesting every episode. Sure. Yeah. Regular show had this formula of, oh, everything's kind of just normal, and now it's just wacky and silly, and then everything's back to normal now. That was just kind of the formula. This pretty much has that same formula, in a sense. It literally is the same thing. This is fucking regular show's ukulele, Mighty Number no. 9. <laughs> yeah yeah that, that's definitely like a fair comparison it just feel and and i think i, I looked and saw like uh, some of the crew that worked on this and basically he he just uh quintel like pulled a bunch of his crew from regular show oh, yeah on this. like there's yeah. animation there's directors on here that worked on regular show like like just uh, I mean, full hog that's just what you do though normally you, you got people that you can rely on you you basically use them yeah uh, yeah but i feel like it also just because of the style of the show i mean it's very clearly like by the same creator like it looks exactly this like if you if you showed me screen caps from close enough and i didn't know that it was a separate show from regular show i would just assume that it was a regular show oh yeah for sure the uh, for the humor i wouldn't really classify it as a stoner comedy it comes off more as a adulting is tough parenting kind of bullshit because i don't think they really relied too heavily on drugs and stuff yeah i think for certain jokes and for certain characters here and there but like yeah like i was saying it it, they didn't like lean too heavily into that but i was saying that if they were ended up on like adult swim or something they very easily could have because they tend to kind of market to that sort of crowd and when I when I say stoner comedy, I don't mean like relying on jokes about drugs and stuff. I mean it more in like just kind of the stupid situational like uh, like it was made for somebody to put on in the background while they're getting high and like eating fucking brownies and shit. Kinda. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a lot of the humor it's just I don't know if I don't find it uh relatable or not, but a lot of the humor is just like we're old now and we're not as cool as we used to be. <laughs> There's an entire episode about that. That's basically the whole show. <laughs> yeah. You got the skate dad and you got a bunch of different shit like this, but I don't know. For me, it's like, it was okay. It was watchable. I didn't hate it or anything, but did you enjoy like- it more than regular show? 
Yeah, but I mean, I liked regular show when it started, and it just went on. That's what I'm saying, like, this is okay, but if they keep relying on, hey guys, we're old, but we're not, we're not trying to be old, but we're old, we're still young. If they keep doing that, then I'm going to be like, yeah, this is dumb. It's sure, definitely, sure. It's definitely written by, you know, mid 30 year olds. They have the whole Jim Carrey episode. <laughs> sure do. <laughs> which, I, which I did enjoy. Yeah. I mean, I enjoyed that too. I thought it was funny, but um, that's what I'm saying is I could see it fucking wearing thin very quickly. And it's only been eight episodes, which is kind of sad to say. In a sense, well, it's been 15 segmented episodes, but yeah, yeah. yeah but uh, I mean, Cartoon Network has really conditioned us to having the the multi part 11 episode shits as just one episode. Yeah, Powerpuff Girls has always done that, and then you think of all the other cartoons. Then it was around that time, Adventure Time regular show, where they started breaking the shit up so they could stretch it out longer. Yeah. And that was, I think that was the reason why I kind of got pissed off with them too about the the whole thing of doing that, where you only get like one 11 minute episode every week now. That kind of pissed me off during that time. Yeah, that was, it was, it was just really weird. Like, and, and they would split it up in with like when a half hour, like 15 minutes, like you're going to get at five o'clock, you're going to get adventure time, but at 515, you're going to get regular show. And I'm like, I don't know if I like this or not. <laughs> I kind of see why they did that, though. I mean, you just kind of think about, you know, kids nowadays and they kind of got like, you know, they got like shorter attention spans than, you know, like we did when we were kids. Like they want to see like something new, like every 15 minutes. So I think that kind of makes sense in that, that regard. Kids these days. Uh, although it was funny they did bring up, you know, I mean, Cartoon Network uh, just uh, it was it was kind of jarring to me when like I completed the first episode. Is and this saw, Cartoon like, Network Studios at the, at the end? That was fucking <laughs> jarring to me because I didn't know that they actually worked on it because I knew that it was for TBS, but I didn't know that Cartoon Network Studios actually animated it. Like I, like I was saying, it's very clearly looks exactly like regular show does. Oh yeah, there's no, thought, there's no difference in animation quality. <laughs> yeah, but I like that was just, down, I thought it was like just a stylistic thing, but I mean, even down to like the, the people working on it and I guess the studio that did it, I was like, holy shit, no, it really is just like they went probably right from working on regular show to like working on this. I honestly, like, I don't know this for sure, but I honestly wouldn't even doubt that they even moved offices. <laughs> like, JG's probably got the same office. I could see that. That would make sense. <laughs> Why move them? Um, well, I, I will say, I, I actually did really enjoy this show. I got a lot of kicks out of this. If only because, um, you know, some of this humor kind of a- appeals to me in the sense where you know, I am rapidly approaching 30. Um, I have many uh, people in my life who are uh, have starting to have families now and having, you know, all this kind of like, you know. Well, and you're married, too. So I am also married. Yes. <laughs> um, so, I mean, so there's a lot of like kind of the relationship humor between um, I think it's Josh and Emily are the two main characters. Yeah. Um, just like their relationship remind there's bits and pieces that remind me of the relationship between me and my wife. Um, like my wife, like we don't have kids yet, but the you got fucking, a dog. That's the closest we, thing. We have a dog. Um, but Mel and was- Mel and I were fucking rolling when they're like, okay, the kids out of the house for the night. And they just fucking do all this. It was like, we have time for errands now and just start doing like fucking twerking all over the place doing errands. That was a pretty funny set. Cause then they have like fucking <laughs> little John blasting like while they do it. I just like the, when they went to the library, they start like, she starts pounding her ass into his face. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, I like that they like throughout the show keep using uh doing taxes as a metaphor for sex, and then you think they're actually gonna have sex, but they actually sit down and do taxes. Yeah, that was pretty good. Bit. I like that show, or I like that 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 bit. Um, so that kind of uh humor appeals to me. Speaking of using the licensed music, though, um, that was a, so. Th- this was kind of like my summation of uh, uh close enough that I had to a friend was that it, it basically reminded me of all the good parts that I remember about regular show. 
like without any of the stuff that I remembered, like from from dropping off on that show. Um, at least now, I mean, you know, it could easily get into other stuff later on, but just from this first season to like, you know, eight episodes. Yeah. But um, that that was one of the things was their use of because I remember in regular show they used the uh, uh, they used to uh, do licensed music a lot, and that was kind of like a weird thing to see like in a kids cartoon uh, for the you know that era. Okay. Um. So I mean, you have like you know uh, basically like every episode they have like uh, I actually wrote it down. They have like Little John. They have Bob Dylan, Queen, Sticks, Simple Minds, uh, Three Six Mafia, like. And they have like a good balance of like sort of like you know more uh, uh, classic stuff and then like uh, more modern stuff to kind of um, hit that balance of like oh okay they're they're getting older but they're trying to not they're they're, they're but they're not that old kind of mentality. Yeah. And I just want to say, one of the things that threw me off on this show is its incessant use of like real world stuff. No, okay, and, yeah, and I want to bring that up too. And it's not even like a license thing. It's just like they'll casually mention an, a real world thing, and like the two main examples that like really threw me off was the one is um. In that whole montage I was mentioning where they're like doing errands and shit, they go to the library and every book they have in their hand is an actual book. Like there's a Dr. Seuss book. There's an Arthur book. There's it's a book. Like a, I, this pigeon needs a bath or whatever. Or don't let the pigeon drive. I don't, I don't watch. It, it's a newer children's book. Yeah. And then there's another episode where they're in the, the, they're trying not to get discovered as old in the club. Their friend legit just pulls out a blockbuster video card. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I definitely wanted to bring that up because it's weird. They will use real world references, but then they'll also use parody references like just willy nilly, like they'll just interchange them. The one that caught me really off guard, and um, I'm not sure if you would have realized this one since you're in a different area for me and Kyle, but mm -hmm. there's the episode where they're um, uh, the skate dad episode where they're bombing the hill, and there's like mm -hmm. the big semi truck that uh, comes through that says Vaughn's on it. Yeah, and, uh, Vons is a grocery store, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought you were, had like Kroger's or whatever out there. We do have Kroger, but I think I, I've heard you guys mention Vons before. Yeah, so that was really yeah. jarring to see. It was just like a fucking, like, just a Vons truck. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, it was so weird. Kyle, what were you saying? Uh, I saw Pan was talking about um, they used an L.A. police station or something. Oh, like oh a real, he, a real yeah, one? Uh, he said there's a, like... Uh, the the they modeled the police station the show after the police station near Cartoon Network Studio, huh? So one of the the skate shop that they do, I swear it was this exact skate shop in Little Tokyo because I've been there <laughs> too. It had the same exact setup when he was there as a young kid, right, right. And then it changed into an Apple Store, which looks like another place in little tokyo it's a shoe shop and it's just completely white and doesn't look like anything so i think he used both of those as oh, well but well, that skate shop exactly the one <laughs> Interesting. in little tokyo yeah i feel like there's a lot of like maybe la specific stuff that maybe i didn't catch on to but maybe you guys picked up because you guys live there yeah um but yeah just like the constant use of like real world stuff. And it's like when I, when I'm not like, um, like it's not surprising that when I see like actual products in, in shows, but I'm used to it being like very blatant product product placement. Uh, but in this one, it just felt natural. Uh, the way that it was interjected it's just like an offhand thing. It wasn't like meant to be like putting it in your face and like drink this or buy this or something. It's just like, that's just something someone would have in their everyday life. So that's what they're going to mention it as. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it, I guess what I, I'm, I was more thrown off by the, the casual use of it. Um, and it didn't feel like we got paid to inject this into our show. I don't know whether they did or not. The, the whole children's book thing, is what really threw me off for product it was like, I can't imagine all these book companies would like want yeah, yeah. this, the, uh, the, the regular show guy to crudely, uh, redraw their covers for this one second bit. Um, I think for a 
books, it's a lot different because you can have, I mean, there's countless of cartoons that talk about Moby Dick and like, you know, Charles Dickinson stuff, sure. just really old stuff. Um, you have War of the Worlds and stuff popping in cartoons. I think with books, it's a little bit different. You can uh, bring stuff up, but I think a lot of cartoons usually yeah. go for the parody Well, especially route. because most of the, I mean, uh, most cartoons are kids' cartoons too. Like, I don't know that, like, it, like if we, we wouldn't have seen like this type of thing like in regular shows specifically, but because like close enough is like an adult comedy and like adults are more privy to like brands and stuff. Like, I guess, yeah, it's just it's just super weird. Yeah, um, I think it's it's just like what is it funnier to reference it by name or is it funnier to do it as a parody? I think that's why a lot of kids' cartoons do that. But like as far as licensed m- music and stuff, um, for one, they have to get they have to like pay royalties, yeah. and then for two, it um, it makes home release like hell. Oh, like yeah, it's so yeah. fucking hard. I mean, God, to do that. like they fucking Sorry. like basically ruined like what was it when MTV was re-releasing all their stuff and they had to basically replace the entire right. soundtracks to like well, that's, Max well, that's why, and Daria. Yeah, I was about to say that's why Daria wasn't on DVD for the longest time. It's the same reason why uh, every Beavis and Butthead collection yeah, doesn't have like any of the music videos. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of things that people don't realize too is like um long time ago when it was still on the air the mario brothers super show used a lot of yeah. licensed music too the only one i remember time. off the top of my head is uh it's not the even Billy vanilli stuff when they actually had him on the show oh uh, they used like buster poindexter right, right. and shit like that uh i i feel like um, because um yeah I feel like because the show like jumps back and forth between using the real world stuff and the the parody stuff, like it, it works for certain situations, like just as far as like the humor factor and seeing like a real world thing or seeing like because I mean very clearly like Josh works for like a, a Best Buy XP, like he works for the Geek Squad, right? He does yeah. like TV installations, yeah. yeah. But I mean like South Park where they'll name drop like uh, PF Changs and stuff, and they'll have a whole episode like based on PF Changs. Just uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think it's really that bad. No, like by name, like I, I said, I don't think it's bad yeah. that they did it. I honestly think it actually works better because of the way that they used it. Um, because it's used so casually that it just seems like oh, of course, like the, if these were normal people, of course they'd be referencing. They, of course, this would exist in an actual world. So like I it, it's not as jarring as it would be like elsewhere, um, and like I, I like it, you for your South Park example, like I noticed them drinking like Dr Pepper and Sprite, and it's just like it's 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 actually that thing. It's you know it's obviously South Park's like crude uh rent like mock up of of a can of it, but it's like that's what they drink, but it's never really brought attention to it. Um, it's just there because that's what you would have in a real world. Um, even though South Park and close enough are nowhere close to a real world. <laughs> no, not at all. Um, I will say, I don't think this, um, this really stro like really skewed far into like, okay. Uh, the real world is getting like really like crazy. Um, like how regular show would like, like just weird, supernatural, uh, unrealistic things would hap would happen when, when shit hit, uh, shit went crazy. I feel like a lot of this, like kind of staves in some kind of realistic realm. Um, there are a few of them that like kind of get a little nuts, but yeah, I was about to say, like, really, he doesn't get that nuts. Like the episode with the fucking uh, the snail voice by Noel Fielding that has a time travel hat. That wasn't that was that was realistic. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying it's not like like <laughs> regular show. That was every single episode. But I'm thinking like in here where it's not as prevalent because um, like obviously in the Skate Dad episode, that's like the craziness is him trying to skate down a, a really steep hill. Um, I like the episode uh, where Josh is like uh, p- trying to revert back to being h- in high school 
uh, to finish his, his old video game. And I like that they showed that the video game character like popped out and it was like talking to him. That's all in his head. It's not an actual thing. Sure. Uh, whereas like in regular like, show, it, it, yeah. it, where it would have yeah, been yeah, an right. actual pixel like. Exactly. Person. He would have that that character would have been real and everyone would have been able to see him. But I like that it was just because Josh was so fucking stressed and out of his mind that he, oh he's the only one that can see that. Um, and it was just like kind of like representing like his regression and his his you know his problems in life. Um, so I, I, I appreciated that not every single episode was like, OK, we're going to totally break the rules of reality um, to to make this, you know, outlandish. Um, but not to say that they didn't do that. I mean, the fuck the last episode deals with someone making uh, <laughs> animal hybrids. Dog to, boy. Dog boy. <laughs> Which is weird that that's the only double length episode. All like every episode is two is in two parts, uh, except for the eighth episode, which is twenty was which is the full twenty two minutes. Dog boy's story needed to be told in full. It did. <laughs> well, plus I mean they have the whole uh, B plot with um, uh, oh, with the uh, with the girl with the girls in their comedy band. Yeah, yeah, and, and like, they meet uh, weird out and he gets mauled by a bear. <laughs> yeah. And he dies. He does. And then his ghost just... gets mauled by the bear ghost. <laughs> I just like, and like they were talking about weird Al, And then the fact that he shows up literally a second later, I'm like, that makes sense. But I also enjoy this, that it's actually weird Al there. Just hiking in the wood on his uh, novelty banana phone. Yeah. And then he gets mauled by a bear in a hat. <laughs> It felt like Dog Boy was a parody on Goat Boy. <laughs> Maybe I'm looking too far into it. Uh, I don't know what Goat Boy is. Do you, man? I feel like that. I recognize that name. It was a Saturday Night Live thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It was kind of what, kind of what it was supposed to be. I can kind of see that because I mean they kind of they, they were doing like a lot of the Jim Carrey references in that episode, and the, you know he was on SNL, and not as like a full time member, but no, he was they, in, uh, uh, living in color. living color. Yeah, but he was on SNL like a bit here and there, but yeah, you know, just everything rolling rolling in with that bit. I mean, uh, as I did want to circle back because one of my I did write down some very specific stuff that got like legitimate laughs out of me. Uh, one of the things was. In regards to the uh, real life stuff showing up in here was when uh, I can't remember w- what episode it was, but it was um, they're all in like the the living room and like uh, the postman comes and like he's just like in their window and he's like, oh, I've got your I've got your delivery of Crossfire here, like the board game. And like Josh just does like from the commercial, he goes like, yeah, yeah, like perfectly, <laughs> like down to like the way that like he pumps his arms, the way he says it, like it fucking it cracked me up so hard like, like was that- I, I i did i don't i didn't know what crossfire was but i knew that but his reaction that was a reference to something so there was that and then uh the other thing that uh, got me really hard was um in the episode where uh josh is uh, gonna get a vasectomy and uh, <laughs> he, has, he has the vasectomy party no, no, no. But the, the specific thing that made me laugh was because um, they're talking about th- they were using robots from Boston Dynamics and the fucking robot they show has a Boston accent. And the very <laughs> first thing you see, like when they talk about, oh, if we're going to use these uh, new models from Boston Dynamics, and it's just in a big robot voice. She just goes, go socks. <laughs> and like, that killed me. Like, uh, I did love the Boston robot. <laughs> it was great. Um, there's a lot of great like bits in here. Like I, I didn't want to write every single one down, but right. like those are the ones that specifically tickled me in a very <laughs> in a very specific way. Yeah. Um, it's like annoying. Uh, the most annoying sound in the world, and they just oh. kept doing. It. <laughs> well, that actually helped them in the end too. So it was yeah. plot relevant. That's right. It was like a heartbreaking moment for them to do it. It was funny. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I enjoyed the entirety of, of that episode because I do love me some fucking Jim Carrey. So that I, that, yeah. that that episode gets a fucking special accommodation. 
Um, I was hoping he would uh, be a celebrity like cameo in it. I was really hoping for it since Weird Al was in there, but it just didn't happen. I could see them. I mean, uh, maybe for season two, who knows? The Jim Carrey's yeah, been hitting the TV circuit a lot more nowadays. So yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah. Have you ever um, been to a medieval times, uh, by the way? Yeah, I haven't because I, I don't think they exist out here. Oh, okay, so just me and Kyle then. It's pretty yeah. rad, JD. You should. I want to uh, go. You should ne- go. Next time I'm out there, we should all go. Totally. Oh, fucking uh, was the, the argument about it not being historically was- accurate? <laughs> it doesn't so matter. They have a risotto there. They didn't eat that shit back then. Something like <laughs> it's historically that. accurate. <laughs> yeah. Great stuff. Um, Matt, you had mentioned earlier that there were a lot of like regular show references in there in here. Um, I only caught two of them. Right. So the ones, that, you, the, the ones the that one, people are bringing up the most are the, there's the episode where um, uh, they're going to like the open houses and like yeah. one, of the, one of the houses you see for sale is the house from regular. Right. Show. I caught that one. Yeah. Uh, so there's that one. And then uh, there's like, I think in, I'm not sure if it's in the same episode, but there's a framed picture of the ultimatum. Okay. Yeah. That's not one I caught there. I'm there's, um, there's an, I don't remember what episode, but someone's wearing the I'm ex- excellent hat. Yeah. Yeah. That's there's the that other one. one I caught. I think that was the, that was the episode where, um, uh, they had like the, the, the underground, uh, arm wrestling, uh, uh, yeah, I think I was with a, the kids. Yeah, there was that. Um, there was like a partial chalk drawing of Mordecai uh, on the ground, and like one episode, like you see like like a quarter of him. Like you can tell <laughs> that it's him though. Um, and then the other thing was there was a framed picture of like a realistic Yeti holding a gumball machine, like on a mountain. And then there's like a blue Jay and a <laughs> raccoon nearby. And there's a quote from a JCQ magazine, so or a JG uh, Q magazine, so JG Quintel funny yeah and those are just the ones i was able to uh, kind of crop up uh, before fun. we recorded i'm sure there'll probably be some more later people might uh, oh, pick I'm out, sure. it, it was fun to see like all those references because like you know very clearly like this is like the natural evolution of regular shows so it's nice to uh kind of see you know him pay tribute to like kind of what got him here yeah um especially because i mean d- got down to i mean Josh is just basically Mordecai because both of those characters are just JG Quintel, like down to how they. Well, I mean, you know, maybe Josh not Morde- is just JG Quintel. <laughs> yeah, all it and, is. and Mordecai is just his fuck is JG's like persona. Like so, when you think about like uh, three in the AM PM or uh, whatever that short's called, that's that character in there looks like Josh, and then when he gets high, he looks like he turns into Mordecai. So it's yeah, like, so it's like not even. Like he's not even being subtle about it, yeah. Which is fine. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's just like it, it's just kind of funny to see. It, it's funny to see because basically the show is revolving. He's, he's making the show revolve around himself, but for a regular show, it's revolving around kind of being in your uh, mid twenties and kind of like you know having your first job and like kind of learning to grow up, I guess. But then like uh, with close enough yeah it's it's starting to get into like oh uh, you're like in your you know early 30s now you've got your family you've got your kid and like this is the type of shenanigans like this t- type of crowd gets into like right. so it's 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 fun to see that even though the 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 humor is very familiar it is it's not exactly the same so it's not like you know oh what if the humor was exactly the same then there would be no reason to watch this so you could just you know mm-hmm. go back and watch a regular show or something but i feel like that there is enough differences here in kind of that's the type of humor that's being portrayed that it's definitely worth a watch yeah for sure um and i'm i'm, I'm like the second season is unsure at the moment because i just haven't heard any news about it um but i'm i'm kind of hoping that they they're able to do more of this. Cause I, I, I do like that the world they're building on. I do like the characters. Um, I really I, hope all that time uh, between the, the show originally supposed to get, you know, the debut and like between then and now, hopefully it hasn't uh, put too much of like a wrench and potentially getting a second season. Yeah. 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 For sure. Cause that's the one thing that I'm kind of worried about. Mm-hmm. Um, well, uh, is there anything yeah. else you guys would want to, mentioned before we start wrapping up here 
Did you say something, Kyle? Saying it was the same with Glitch Text. Glitch Text was being worked on for fucking years and dropped and working and dropped. And it's the same with this. It's just been kind of messed around with. So who knows if. I feel like Glitch Text is still like in some limbo, though, too. Like, I know we're still getting like the other half of the episodes that uh, dropped, but I, I don't think they're. I don't know if there's going to be anything after that. I don't think they've From said, but I think it's. Creative. I, I think they were like more like, hey, let Netflix and Nickelodeon know that you want more of this and maybe they'll let us make more. Right. So that's the that's the give and take you get on that. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But then you get because st- they like they just announced like okay. They just announced that they're uh doing season three of Infinity Train on HBO Max. Now mm-hmm. We didn't even know that there was going to be a season three. The last I had heard, um, the, the creator was like saying, "Oh, if uh, if you want to see more uh, Infinity Train, you know, make sure that you watch it when it's on HBO Max, like you know, first and second season, blah blah blah." And then we just kind of get like this announcement for season three, like out of nowhere, and mm-hmm. it's sort of like, okay, well, so very clearly that was already being worked on, so fan support wasn't really really gonna. I mean, other than you know the regular fan support that would have been there for like watching those first two seasons, so. Um, yeah, that's that, that was just thing, like a... you haven't got any footage. You just got a picture drawn by them, so you don't know how far into development they are. Yeah, it's like when you get a game and you just got just the cutscenes and shit that they show. You, you don't see any gameplay. It's like hmm, yeah, sure. Where they are? On that. Yeah, because uh, they didn't actually uh, give a specific day for that either. I think they said it this year. So I mean, that does give them uh, like the rest of the half of this year to potentially get something out. But still, that was just something in regards to that. Uh, you know, as far as the turnaround on like new seasons and stuff, like felt, felt like worth bringing up because that, that was just announced like fairly recently. True that. Yeah. Right. Um. So yeah. Um. Well, that's our thoughts on Close Enough. Uh, I'm, I'm going to title this tentatively Season 1. Uh, hopefully there's a Season 2, or also I'll have to rename this episode later on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I'm interested to see hear what you guys think of this episode. Um, feel free to leave a comment on uh, the YouTube video of this. Um, but like I said, you can also leave comments on our Facebook and our Twitter. And if you join our discord, you can come talk to us about it. Um, we're all, all that, all that's good. And we'd really appreciate your uh, support and all that. Uh, but genuinely, thank you everybody for listening to this and you guys, I'm, I'm always uh, glad for, to have you guys here every week. So <laughs> um, until, uh, yeah, um, but we will be back again next week for our mo- mu- momentous mon- monumentous I, I, I don't know. It's late. Shut up. It's our 200th episode. Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's 200, even though it's not really 200 because it's our, 200. It's 200 in it. the in in the current numbering system. So we're <laughs> going to treat it as such. Uh, so come back next week for uh, for a show, a 200th show of, of sorts. And make it'll sure be you, good. Make sure you listen to the whole backlog before you hit that one. Yeah, listen to like all 200 and some odd podcasts, starting from the first one where me and Kyle did it together. It was just us. It was just the two of us. How many episodes of your own podcast have you listened to besides editing? Like actually listen to it? Yes. Not many. (laughs) (laughs) Like uh, the first couple of it. You know what? I'll save these stories for next week. There you go. (laughs) There, there's your teaser. You get to hear about me talk about behind the scenes editing stories, which aren't all that interesting. Um, but uh, thank you everybody for listening, and we will catch you all again next week with a new show. So thank you, and uh, we'll see you later. We'll see ya. Thanks for listening to the Ink and Paint Club podcast. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the show. Join our Discord and chat with us, and subscribe to our Patreon for some cool bonuses. Links are in the description. We'll see you next time.